today we got an exclusive interview with him. Hey there, Lassie. You're here to ask me a few questions, Sir William. Let's start from the beginning. When and where were you born? According to the Brits, I spawned from hell, but I'll tell you a nice, heartwarming Scottish tale. I was born in Eldershire, Renfrewshire, Scotland in the 1270s. My pa's name was Alan Wallace. Don't know if you heard of him. He was a Scots landowner. What was life like growing up? Well, I grew up with two brothers, so it was a wee bit stinky, but not other than that, nothing out of the ordinary. So can you tell us why you're being executed today? Ha! I may have killed just a few Englishmen. Okay. A lot of Englishmen, including the sheriff of a town. I'm here today because on August 3rd of this year, 1305, I was captured in Rob Royston. I was bound and then brought back here to London. Why did you do all this, William? Tell us your story. Well, it started because I was outlawed for killing a constable's son. When they found out about my wife, Marion Bradfoot, who I was visiting in Landmark, Sheriff William Hillsborough of Landmark found me when I was with Marion and his soldiers surrounded us. I was able to escape, but they captured Marion. They had Marion put to death just to spite me and bring me out of hiding. Sorry about your wife, William, but please, continue. Well, that night my men and I snuck into Hell's Rig's bedchamber, and that was where I slew him. This started the uprising in 1297. Yes, I remember that. After that, English Murray and I were able to lead a successful campaign and took several English castles. However, my guerrilla warfare tactics made King Edward take notice of me. After I took Glasgow, he turned his attention to raising an army and defeating us. And it looks like he was able to do just that. Not before the Battle of Stirling Bridge. The small and narrow bridge at Stirling is the best place to cross the River Forth. We came in from the north and waited on the hill across the bridge where the English were. They had 300 cavalry and 10,000 foot soldiers against our 36 horsemen and 8,000 foot soldiers. The next morning they sent two friars to try to make us surrender but we turned them down. Over the next few hours they sent their heavy, heavy cavalry across the bridge. I took that opportunity and sent our spearmen down and surrendered them. Their horses couldn't get a hold on the marsh ground and trapped their men against the river. The bridge collapsed and many English fell to their deaths. Within the hour we had most of their men killed. Their leader, Hugh de Cressingham, I filleted him alive and fashioned a belt from his skin. army marched south and we were confronted by King Edward himself. With him was a force much greater than our own, some 1,500 mounted knights and 12,000 veteran soldiers. We met at Falkirk. My army was in four large groups. Two mine, I called. A boy to the ring now, let's see if he can dance. I was sorely disappointed. My men refused to attack. The English sent their cavalry at us. We were able to hold our own, but then at the crucial point when our own cavalry should have ridden out the help, they returned and left and attacked our soldiers and slaughtered them all. Then the English unleashed our new weapon, the longbow. Its heavy iron tips rained down on us and sheared through chainmail and our padded leather armor. In pain and disorganized, our troops scattered and many were killed. I barely escaped. After that, I sold the France for refuge in the call on King Philip to honor the treaty we had and give me a letter for John Boyle 
who is the rightful king of Scotland. He was under the Pope's control after Edward took Scotland, but it was not to be, and in 1303 I sailed back to Scotland and joined Sir John Comyn and Sir S Simon Fraser, and we defeated three English armies in one day. Then on August 13, 1305, I was captured in Rob Royston, like I said, and today I am to be executed for standing up for what I believe in. Here you call that treason. To William Moss for sharing your story with us today. We are now back to live feet of the execution stage. Look, here comes Sir William Wallace now, back from being dragged through the streets. They are bringing him to the gallows now. They're placing the noose around his neck. Oh, that's just disgusting. Look at they're disemboweling him while he's hanging there. Dear God, children, look away. They're cutting him into fourths. This is Justin. It appears that they will be sending those parts of him to Berwick, Newcastle upon Tyne, Stirling, and Perth to show the price of treason. And as you can see, his head has been spiked on the Tower of London. <laughs> 